tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Oculus from Facebook. The starting five for Kurt Miller, Breon January bringing great leadership, veteran leadership playing the point this year. Brianna Jones filling in nicely for John Quill Jones who has been out all season, opted not to play. And for the Aces, he already referenced it. There is the change, China Danielle Robinson instead of Lindsey Allen. So more experience and more offensive punch. Yeah, Danielle Robinson has played in 14 career playoff games. Lin Lindsey Allen only two. So that experience is what Bill Lambeer is hoping pays off in addition to that speed that Holly noted in the open. So the Connecticut Sun hanging their hats on defense this year, taking on the Aces, who had been averaging 89 points per game during the regular season, put up only 62 in game one. Angel McCautry coming out strong. She was upset, said that it was more like a football game that was played on Sunday and thought that her team had to be just as physical tonight. Well, already more patience on the offensive end for Vegas. I thought they took some early shots, maybe forced some offense, look for them to work deeper into the clock. Great finish that almost looked impossible there by Alyssa Thomas. Yeah, that seems to be what she does, making the impossible possible at 18 points, second only to Jasmine Thomas in game one. McCautry bottled up, gets it over to Asia Wilson. Had it spin out, and the ball goes over to Connecticut. 34% from the floor was all Las Vegas could manage. Now, they, they missed a lot of shots, especially it seemed early on that seemed makeable, like the one Asia just missed. But boy, Connecticut's defense was stifling. Yeah, I mean, they do the little things, like force someone else to bring the ball up the floor or make you catch the pass a little bit further out using their physicality on the inside. There's Brianna Jones with the easy score one-on-one -on, -one on the interior. This is a Connecticut roster that is built to be dominant defensively based on their personnel. Kayla McBride, one of the players you referenced who needs to get going, has that one clang off the backboard. Brian January gets the friendly roll, and January is not playing at 100%. She might see that she has her hand taped up, has been playing with a dislocated finger. Kurt Miller, the head coach, said it's just that time of year where people have to play through pain, and that's why Danielle Robinson got the start. She's lightning quick. And I really like that Danielle Robinson can get to feed the paint. That's going to help Vegas' offense. They need to get the defense to move and collapse and open up opportunities for scoring. Early block for Asia Wilson, who led the league in blocks this season. Asia, an MVP in just her third season in the league. Dan Padover, the executive of the year, also for this Las Vegas franchise, which is the number one overall seed, 18 and four on the season. See, just that small gesture, Brian January was denying Kayla McBride, forcing a different entry than what Vegas would have wanted. Carolyn Swords missed the first time, but not the second time. Ninth year out of Boston College, actually retired during the offseason and got a job in the marketing department, was laid off in that respect, and was asked if she wanted to come back and play, and she's doing just that. January sets it up and knocks it down. And that has been huge for Connecticut. The three-point shot in the playoff versus the regular season has been more efficient, very effective in helping to balance their offense. These are the two... Bottom two teams in the league, I should say, who rely on the three the least. Las Vegas only makes about four per game and only about six per game for the Sun for Kurt Miller wearing another spiffy shirt on the sidelines. Wilson misses badly wide left. And now Jasmine Thomas gets it up. Good play by McCautry to get back and keep Alyssa Thomas from gathering in the pass. During the regular season, Connecticut shot the three at 31%. In the playoffs, they're shooting it at 41%. And that is a significant jump for a team that likes to play in the middle of the floor to get points from long range. Jasmine Thomas has been called for the personal foul for Connecticut, a team that got out of the gate very slowly, 0-5 and 1-6 to start the season, got in as the number seven seed, and already with three wins on their resume, including game one in this series. 
Asia dribbling, pounded by Alyssa Thomas, but was able to get the shot off and in. Asia Wilson put in work. Alyssa Thomas made her work for that basket, and Asia Witten got it. Now McCautry drawing the defensive assignment. They're going to get Angel for the personal foul. I mean, this is going to be the matchup to watch all night. Asia Wilson against Alyssa Thomas, and she just wills her way, uses her own physicality there, does Asia Wilson, and the rise and fire with that left hand money. Alana Bonner did not have a good game on Sunday, was 2 of 12 from the floor, and they still were able to blow out Las Vegas. Robinson now with a couple of scores on the drive. And that's the pace that Vegas wants to play at. When this game slows down to a grind, that benefits Connecticut. Vegas has got to get this game going north to south. And when we talked to Bill Lambeer earlier today, he said pace several times, thought that his team looked like they were playing in mud. Now Robinson out in front of everybody. Pops a little bit too strong, and now a Whistle as Angel McCautry hits the deck, and it's a foul on Connecticut. And by the response, you are correct. It's on Breon January. And Bill Lambeer had a great line. He said, on Sunday, we came to play a basketball game. Connecticut came to win a basketball game, and he thought that was the difference. Kayla McBride with the bucket. She only had four points on Sunday. Robinson with the foul on the perimeter. Looks like they might be calling it a little closer than things started out on Sunday. First one on Robinson, who made one start during the regular season, and that was for Lindsey Allen when Allen sat out a game because of an inconclusive COVID test. Other than that, it's been the same starting five all year for the Aces. Bonner, up and down, they get her. She said the ball was touched. But he's called for the turnover. Vegas already, already with five starters. All of them have scored. You see how the defense is sagging off into the lane, trying to crowd Asia Wilson, and Alyssa Thomas is in a lot of pain. Oh, man, and she's holding one of her shoulders. She is playing with partially torn labrums in both of her shoulders. But she's hurting. And Alyssa Thomas is about as tough as they come. So a major concern. We'll take a break. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A medium Sprite kind of spicy. But Went back to the locker room favoring that right arm. Keep an eye on her right shoulder. Yeah, I mean, it, there, that wasn't because of any kind of contact. It looked like maybe she went to swing that, that shoulder, and you don't want to speculate about injuries, but she's just in a lot of pain. And again, she's been playing valiantly with two hurt shoulders. I mean, no doubt if there was a playoff MVP at this point, it would be Alyssa Thomas, a player who is amongst the best in games with 20 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, second most in WNBA history in playoff games with that stat line. She's just been fantastic, and not to mention her defense, which has been stellar. And another cause for concern for Connecticut, Daniel Robinson got to the line because J Jasmine Thomas fouled her, and Thomas already has two personals in the first five minutes of this game. Well, Alyssa Thomas goes out, so the rookie Beatrice Mont Premier is now in the lineup for Connecticut. This is a big 4-5. But Mont Premier had a very solid game one. Got some key rebounds and played an important part when Brianna Jones had to leave the game because of foul trouble. Yeah, she played 22 minutes, had three blocks during that time. Bonner gets the Robinson miss and brings it up by herself. Bonner 
long range, a little bit too strong, but Brianna Jones gives him a fresh 14 seconds. And it's even more important for Dewana Bonner to find her offensive stride in this game in the absence of Alyssa Thomas. In game one, Jasmine Thomas stepped up, had 31 points, and so Bonner's absence was not felt as much, but without Alyssa, Dewan Bonner has to step up and score. Yeah, it's uh, as you take a look, the fewest in a playoff game for her in four years since she was with Phoenix. And you think about Bonner and Alyssa Thomas, they, during the regular season, combined to score 43% of Connecticut's points. And right now, Thomas, you're having that right shoulder looked at and Bonner needing to get going. Eric can be called for the personal foul that led to this possession. Connecticut has now tied the game up on the layup by Brianna Jones. And very curious to see how the bench responds now that they've been inserted into the game. Jackie Young, Dierica Hamby. Jackie Young did get going late, but she really didn't get into a rhythm until the fourth quarter, but they need Hamby. And Hamby remarkably gets, who got the bucket there, remarkably had no rebounds on Sunday. It's really unheard of for a player like Dierica Hamby who plays incredibly hard and is normally very dependable, but you have to credit Connecticut's defense for how they really just were physical with Hamby and shut her down. A balanced shot, Jasmine Jones buries it. Jasmine Thomas, excuse me. She is playing with plantar fasciitis in one of her feet, so also a little Gimpy, but certainly looked terrific on Sunday. January is in full denial on McBride. And no foul called. Great defense, but that's one of the things January is known for. Boy, she's so fun to watch on the defensive end. I mean, she understands mm -hmm. angles. She never stops fighting for position. A player that in her days in Indiana, obviously playing beside arguably the greatest defensive player to ever play in the WNBA and Samika Catchings, she just really started to thrive, and you see the designations, all WNBA defensive team there. One of the new additions coming over in the off season for this team. She's a little late joining them. Bonner gets her second bucket of the game. Connecticut up by two. McBride with the floater, just wouldn't go in, but Asia Wilson working hard as usual. Wilson has been the bright spot, the most consistent player for Vegas early in, these ser in this series, both on the glass, with her offense, even though she's had to work really hard for everything. Robinson up court. Asia, nice catch. Waited for Jasmine Thomas to go by to get the points. 16 of their 19 points coming in the paint so far for Vegas. First in the league in paint points, first in the league in two-point field goal shooting this year, and free throws. They get to the line often. Bonner scoops it. Tough, tough basket there by Bonner. Great footwork to get to the rim. Maybe Bonner realizing that she's got to pick up some of the slack with Alyssa Thomas out of this game after hurting her right shoulder. And you see two players there ready for Asia Wilson on the catch. Dewana Bonner here keeps that pivot foot down, step through move, right past Hamby, tough bucket. Bonner coming off that eight point performance broke a string of 18 straight games in which she scored in double figures. Asia scoring in double figures every game this season for the Aces. Asia Wilson gets it blocked by Mom Premier, the rookie. Bonner. Another friendly rim. And she has already matched her point total from game one. Well, just much more confident in, in her moves and her aggressiveness, not allowing the physicality to keep her on the perimeter, but instead inviting it. Cautry can't get it to go. Tyler Charles, yellow sneakers, the rookie from Maryland in the game now for Connecticut. Really small lineup here right now for the Sun with Charles, Essence Carson, Bonner, and Mont Premier. Sugar Rogers off the bench for Vegas, gets it over to Jackie Young. 
And Jasmine Thomas, of course, on the perimeter. Angel, nice look to Hamby, or to uh, Wilson, excuse me. And that's the extra pass that Vegas was not getting in game one. They were forcing up that jump shot. Vegas is not a jump shooting team. They are a pound in the paint offensive squad. You see a couple of seconds difference between the two clocks. Jasmine Thomas gets it out. And Charles floats it and hits it and got hit herself. Yeah, McCautry got her on the late swipe. I think she got her hair. That's a lot. That's an advantage for. <laughs> Does that still count as a foul? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hair is the part of the head. Part of the body. No, the hair is a part of the head and the With head is a part, part of the body. body. <laughs> yes, that was, that was my extension there. No, no pun intended. I've got my bun on today, too. Yeah, you're Kyla Charles. Yeah, Kyla Charles. She's got you beat by probably about three inches there, buddy. <laughs> Maybe more like four. <laughs> Charles delivering at the line. So Connecticut up by two. Robinson tries to tie it, but left it just a little bit short. Much different story from game one on Sunday. Well, Connecticut lost Alyssa Thomas, but you can't tell based on the way that Dewana Bonner has stepped up in the first quarter. We thought that Vegas was going to shoot out like a cannon, but Connecticut's got the lead. Me, I got a wide open shot. We need her to continue to be aggressive. Thank you, Brian. Uh -huh. Vote! Go vote! <laughs> Today is National Voter Registration Day, and the players engaged in social issues all season long. Pam Ward, LaChina Robinson, and Holly Rowe joining you in this game. This is game two of the best of five semis. And yes, Alyssa Thomas halfway through the first quarter left, and we've been informed that she has left the building with her right arm in a sling. Yeah, hate to hear that, but we hope the best for Alyssa. And in the meantime, Kurt Miller experimenting with some lineups here. A smaller lineup, Essence Carson, Kyla Charles both on the floor with Bonner, Mont Premier, and Jasmine Thomas. Jackie Young going coast to coast. Had 17 points in game one, most of them late in the game when it was well at hand, or well in hand. 25-point win for Connecticut. Shot clock winding down. Charles into the lane, and a blocking foul has been called. Well, guys, we have an update on Alyssa Thomas. She has left the building. It looked like she was in a sling as she left in that back hallway with that right shoulder. They're not telling us whether it's a dislocation at this point, but you do know that she already has a partially torn labrum in that right shoulder. It has been problematic for her. Now be aware there is what we call a clean corridor. So the medical staff will take Alyssa Thomas to a facility where she can have either an x-ray or an MRI or both that is clean, where she would not be subject to any outside people. So uh, they will evaluate her and we will let you know as soon as we hear more. And so important, Holly, for the WNBA to have developed that clean corridor so that players can leave. I mean, they don't have all of the medical equipment that they may need right here on site. So very important there that Alyssa can go and probably get some, some deeper um, x-rays or whatever she may need on that shoulder. Yes. One of the many details that Kathy Engelbert and the rest of the WNBA staff paid great attention to because you know, normally she'd go to a hospital and you couldn't come back into the bubble. It right. would be over. So they came up with that clean corridor and it's worked out well. And we certainly hope for good news for Alyssa Thomas. Here's De'Erica Hamby at the free throw line. Yeah, Hamby should be able to take advantage of this lineup because you've got an Essence Carson that's trying to fill in at the four some. They may play Kyla Charles a little bit at the four she did in college. Um, and, and so with this big lineup with Swords and Hamby, I, I would look to go to Hamby. And now that Aja Wilson's in the game, they do have a, a, an advantage at the four and five spot. Hamby one out of two. Vegas only took two free throws in the first quarter. Unusual for them. They get to the line more than any other team in the league. And they're not aggressive, did not get there enough in game one, according to Bill Lambert. He, he said it was indicative of just them not being aggressive enough. Jackie Young picks up the foul. 
That is her first, second team foul on the Aces who are trying to even up this best of five series. Game one of Seattle and Minnesota will follow tonight at nine Eastern time. I think Vegas has got to really be aggressive defensively here. Connecticut is trying to figure things out offensively with this different lineup without Alyssa Thomas. This is where Vegas really has to take control of the game defensively and get out and run. Yeah, that's a great point. This is their opportunity. No Thomas and maybe some discombobulation with the lineup being juggled. Asia. Let me tell you, the mode that Asia Wilson is in, she's carrying two players to the rim. She doesn't care. I mean, there are clearly two defenders here on Asia Wilson, but she's on her left side, which is her strong side, uses her quickness. Am I going to get it up? Yes. And I'm going to get fouled and get to the free throw line. That's an MVP move. Dewana Bonner picked up the foul. Asia got to the line more than any other player in the league this season. Kurt Miller pleading his case with the officials, but what a spectacular year for the third year pro out of South Carolina. Only Enrique Agumboale averaged more points per game than Asia. Well, and I remember, Pam, you and I were there last year when Vegas lost in their opportunity to advance to the finals to the Washington Mystics. And Asia Wilson had not played like herself consistently down the stretch there. She was trying to gel with Liz Cambage all season long. and. There were just stretches where she did not look like the Asia Wilson, and boy, has she dominated this year and come back with a real vengeance. Essence Carson, the 13-year vet, nails the outside shot. It's Vegas without Liz Cambage or Kelsey Plum all season, relying, relying heavily on their bench, but Wilson has been so consistent. No foul there, ball just uh, out of bounds. Vegas holds on to it. Tanisha Wright there, one of the one of the assistants for Bill Lambeer this year. Kyla Charles has blood on her leg, and that's why you see her there in the yellow sneakers getting attention. And coming up, we will have that game between Seattle and Minnesota. You see the, the Lynx arriving for game one of their best of five semifinal. You can watch it streaming live on the ESPN app. Wherever you may be, Sylvia Fowles is questionable tonight. Still dealing with that calf injury. She just did not look like herself uh, when we saw her earlier in the playoffs. She did not, but the Lynx have to feel like this is kind of groundhog day, right? They're getting <laughs> off that bus again. Like, okay, game one against Seattle. Just good to hear that everyone is healthy. Um, and that the, this game will go on. Yes, all three tests that were inconclusive for Seattle players, they have all been cleared. They had to get multiple negative results, and all three have been cleared. The game will go on, which is uh, terrific news. Well, it's been a wild 48 hours here in the bubble as Kathy Engelbert, the WNBA commissioner, had to determine whether or not the bubble had been compromised. They had to contact Trace deal with the idea of maybe a community spread. And at the end of the day, Seattle had to test twice a day for the last 48 hours. And those players who were inconclusive had to have even more negative tests within 24 hours of each other. So we just found out about six o'clock that the last player had been cleared. Seattle will be at full strength, but a very wild situation. They did practice today or have a shoot around today, but only with one player missing. So a very up and down time here for Seattle, but it's good news that there has been no community spread. There are negatives here, and uh, we will move forward. Can't imagine what it's been like for Seattle just emotionally in this stretch. You show up thinking you're getting ready to play a game, and then, you know, I mean, those players had to go into isolation, the ones that had the inconclusive right. test. So you're you're in your room or you're not able to maybe attend full shoot arounds and practices up to this point. And um, that's tough when you're in playoff mode and everyone's locked in and ready to go, but just glad that everything uh, is, is back to good shape. Meanwhile, this game is tied up at 27 apiece. Brianna Jones hitting from the outside, a player who has had a terrific season after limited playing time, but she was she was playing behind John Quell Jones last year, and that'll do it. And now Dewana Bonner playing some minutes at the four spot as well, which is a more difficult matchup for Dierka Hamby. And Hamby in the right spot at the right time was fouled 
on her follow attempt. She'll be at the line when we come back. And the ESPN app. So many choices. Here's Hamby back at the free throw line. And Bill Lambeer, according to Hamby, Hamby yesterday said that Lambeer said to her, I've never seen you quit before. Thought that she quit in game one on Sunday and Dierka said that she was embarrassed by that. He heard her feelings and she said she went back and once she looked at the film, she said she was even more embarrassed by the performance. Yeah, I mean, it was a game where, you know, Bill Lambeer said it. We got frustrated with our offense and we stopped playing on defense. <laughs> Big shot there by January. She is confident from long range in these playoffs. And Danielle Robinson went under the screen there. Good read by January. But yeah, it's just, it looked like they quit. That's really the only way to say it. Oh boy, Asia doesn't have any quit in her. And Hamby is the player who is, is in this league because of her hustle. She has admitted that herself, that she busts her butt basically on every play, and that's why she is in the league. January. Not afraid to take over a game. And here's Bill Lambeer yelling at his team to get up and guard her. Ten points for January. Because we, we saw some of those same shots for Jasmine Thomas, and, and Bill Lambeer said he wanted his big to step up and contest in those situations. Connecticut up by three. Again, playing without Alyssa Thomas. Charles wide open as it skip off. Carolyn Swords back in the game. And there is an update. Alyssa Thomas is out for the game and is receiving further evaluation. So Alyssa Thomas, who left halfway through the first quarter, will not play tonight. Right here, Danielle Robinson goes under the screen. Rion January pulls up. That time chased by Robinson. But Dierka Hamby never steps up and shows. So what do you do? You shoot the pull up. And, and Rion January has been slow to get into a rhythm offensively. Understandably, she missed time with COVID-19. She was late arriving. She's had that, that injury to her dislocated finger. But she's a gamer. Mm -hmm. A veteran who just a couple of years ago led the league in three-point percentage, won a championship in Indiana. It's for Phoenix the last couple of years and making an impact with Connecticut. And this is a really interesting lineup. So Bill Lambeer went big a minute ago with Asia Wilson and Swords and Hamby. And now he's got McCautry back in. Robinson with the foul out on the perimeter. Robinson getting the start for only the second time this season, and that is foul number three, so she heads to the bench. And Kurt Miller said we struggled to guard Danielle Robinson. He thought that she may be a focal point for Vegas tonight because he said when I looked back at our tape and looked at our defense, she was definitely a player that we let get loose a little too much. And you may not see it necessarily in her numbers, but just how she was able to dribble, penetrate a little bit, and create and take some defense with her. Lindsey Allen comes in to run the point now with Robinson on the bench. That's a monster block by Asia Wilson. Vegas down one. And steps taken by McCautry as she tried to put a move on January. Good pass there by Bonner, but even better defense by Asia Wilson. Look at the verticality that keeps her from creating contact that would signal a foul. Just gets up. Yeah, she really does in general do a really good job of not fouling. Especially for a shot blocker. Jackie Young making things happen. Brianna Jones stuck a hand in. But Bree Jones getting back. I How mean, that? that is Connecticut defense. The fact that Brianna Jones came back to take away that fast break chance for Jackie Young, that's Connecticut Sun defense. And that's your five player rotating back. Look at Jones. That's your center, essentially. Yes. Able to get down. She did pick up the personal foul, however, but. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Allen with her first shot of the game off the glass. January. Now with Jackie Young on her. Good ball movement to get it as close as can be for Mom Premier. Once again, Mom, Mom Premier filling in where needed. She's long, runs the floor well. 
athletic, moves her feet. It gets a block there on Angel McCautry. Come on, rookie. No backing down for the Connecticut Sun, even without Alyssa Thomas doing what needs to be done. Beatrice Mont Premier with the score and then the block. Hello. I know. I'm surprised Lacia's making time for us. She is expecting mother. Her and her wife, Jessica, will be. She's not tired yet, so she might as well do it now. <laughs> Before the baby gets here, right? How about Alyssa Thomas going out with uh, what we believe to be a shoulder injury? They were down three, and now Connecticut has the lead. I mean, when you hang your hat on defense and effort, and, you know, that's really your foundation, that's what you can always control. Connecticut doesn't really worry about their offense as much as they do the defensive end, and you know, defense is consistent. You play hard, you play the scout, you stick to the game plan, that's what they've done. Yeah, only Seattle was stouter on defense than Connecticut as far as giving up points per game. As we go inside two minutes. I thought it would be Connecticut that would be searching for answers without Thomas, and it seems like Vegas that's searching. I mean, as Bills far as different lineups, right? Had a right? number of different lineups, and then I get that you're trying to counter, but they still just have not settled in well, and credit to Connecticut. Thank goodness for Vegas fans that they have Asia. Oh, my gosh. Where would they be without Wilson? 15 now for the MVP. 7 for 11 from the field. And four blocks. Bill Lambeer has been singing Asia's praises all season. So much put on her shoulders. Wanted her to be more vocal as a leader. She has embraced that role. You hear her talking to her team. Keep playing black. Let's go black. Trying to get her teammates to come along. She is the only player in double figures. And the next closest is Danielle Robinson and Hamby with five apiece. One of the areas that Asia Wilson has made the most impact for her team this year has been on defense. She has been a different kind of player this season. Bill Lambier consistently talking about watch all of the ways she's affecting this ball game. And, and we've seen it today, not only with the blocks, the rebounding, the toughness. She is adding that different element for them. And she's also stepping out, has better range, as you see right there, over two defenders. Boy, Holly, she is carrying this team on her shoulders right now. He had 19 points in all of game one, already with 17 to knock this game up. Mom Premier inside, Carolyn Swords came over and forced the shot to go awry. Robinson on the bench with the three personals. Young playing the point now. And then you see the defense going under all the screens on Young. That's the shot she needs to be able to knock down. The one that we've seen her hit throughout the season. I won't say consistently, but she definitely found her confidence from the free throw line. She's got to find it tonight. At 8 for 12 from the field. Four blocks. Doing it on both ends. But she needs Hamby to join in. She needs Angel McCautry. Angel McCautry is one of the most prolific scorers in playoff history. Contra got the first bucket of the night for Vegas, and that's been her only points. Long three taken by Bonner, and another whistle on the floor. It's going against Con Connecticut. Long Premier called for her second personal foul. Rookie from Miami dealt with a foot injury that Caused her to miss a lot of time in her senior season, but still led her team in every major statistical category, playing for Katie Meyer down there. And this is where Dierka has done well in this first half. Only one true field goal, but this will be her fifth and sixth free throw attempts on the night. This is the YouTube TV Try It Free Throw. Watch WNBA games and 85 plus live channels when you try YouTube TV for free at tvyoutube.com. It's always good when things are free. <laughs> True that. 
So here we go. Waning seconds. Vegas with the one-point advantage. Leon January being guarded by Lindsey Allen. Now with the switch, gets around Swords easily and hits it. Yeah, teams will attack Swords in pick and roll situations. And it worked. So Connecticut with the one point advantage after one quarter of play, even though they lost it. On Sylvia Fowles' AAU team growing up. That's how the game goes full circle is Sylvia has an AAU team in Miami and Beatrice actually played on that team. You talk about giving back to the next generation. That's Sylvia Fowles having an impact on a young woman that looks like she's trying to uh, step into her footsteps in the WNBA. That's right, Beatrice Mom Premier started her career at Baylor and then finished it out at the University of Miami and as Holly mentioned, was taken by LA and was cut. Connecticut picked her up and she has done wonderful things. Swords called for the pump on Dewana Bonner. So Mom Premier getting the start here in the third quarter. If you're just joining us, Alyssa Thomas played just under five minutes before she hurt her right shoulder. And we have heard from uh, Connecticut's son, uh, the uh, public relations department says it is a shoulder injury. She will not come back for this game and she is undergoing further evaluation. The downside for Beatrice Mom Premier is that she does have to play some minutes on Asia Wilson who went off in that first half with 17 points, 8 for 12 from the field. So that's where Connecticut is missing Alyssa Thomas is defensively on Asia Wilson. That is the third foul on Angel McCautry. Daniel Robinson also with three fouls for the Aces who had the most prolific bench scoring wise in the history of the WNBA. Bonner got a good look and buried it. Well, again, that's what teams will do oftentimes is pick on Carolyn Swords, get her in pick and roll situations where maybe she can't recover and help the jump shooter. And if you go under there, Bonner nails it. That is a good sign for Kayla McBride, who was just one of six in the first half and also struggled in game one. And I thought McBride would be one of the more important players for Vegas in the playoffs because she has that ability to stretch the floor with her three-point shot. And Vegas likes to play in the middle of the floor. They need balance because right now, Connecticut is packing it in on the inside. Daniel Robinson. Boy, Asia Wilson was looking up, expecting the shot and the rebound. Still was able to get off a pretty good shot. Robinson starting for Lindsey Allen this evening. And Bonner knew that was going in as soon as she put it up. She's in the zone. Remember in game one, Jasmine Thomas had 31 points, a career high. Thomas quiet so far with just two points. But Bonner is starting to heat up. Bonner with 13, January with 13, doing the heavy lifting on offense. And McBride screams after she hits the bucket and got fouled. And I want to make this point about Kayla McBride. She has the reputation in the WNBA as a three-point shooter, but she's really a scorer. And right there, she takes it to the middle of the floor and gets it to drop in the lane. But even going back to her days at Notre Dame, I mean, her mid-range game was a killer. She could do all things, all facets of the game. And so hopefully she remembers that. And the way that Connecticut is denying her, she can go back door, use the middle of the floor. She's not just a three-point shooter. She's got five points already in this third quarter. Vegas goes on top by two. No team is led by more than four. Here comes Bonner. Oh, boy. Dewana Bonner. Liking that matchup against Angel McCautry. Mom Premier with the steal. Two on one. January puts it up and in. Great help by Beatrice Mom Premier. Picking up the slack on the pick and roll by Asia Wilson. Leads to that shot by January. They have hit all three of their long range shots in this quarter. McCautry lost a shoe. So it's five on four right now. Bonner, why not? Hello. Somebody better guard her. <laughs> well, Bonner as hot right now as Jasmine Thomas was in game one. Just in case you did not get the memo, Dewana Bonner just showed up from 
And boy, it's a 9 nothing run for Connecticut. This is the largest lead of the game for any team. And who else but Asia Wilson to, to bail out this Las Vegas team who's trying not to go down by two games to none. I mean, it takes Vegas too long to adjust defensively. We saw that with Jasmine Thomas in game one. If Bonner comes down and she is starting to feel it as she was to start this third quarter, you got to change how you're playing with her. you got to get a sense of urgency. Maybe look to deny her. Do something different to get her out of that rhythm. Well, guys, you saw that sequence of events and the team reaction. Well, in that last huddle, Dewana Bonner was screaming at her teammates, don't let down, don't let down. They don't bleeping respect us. They are continually in the fight for respect. Disrespect this Connecticut team at your own peril. I'd like to think that Alyssa Thomas is somewhere getting her shoulder looked at, watching this game on her phone and realizing they are fighting for her in her absence. She is definitely proud of the level of intensity this team is showing in her absence. They have not let up on the defensive end. The offense is starting to follow. and They're getting open looks. Vegas is just not really making their presence felt defensively. Beatrice's mom, Premier, has just picked up her fourth personal to send Jackie Young to the line. So now mom, Premier, will sit down. It's given them quality minutes in both of these games so far, especially defensively. Dewana Bonner, you mentioned struggling from three-point range, only 25% beyond the arc in the regular season and had missed her first seven shots from three in this series. She's hit all three of them in this quarter. But Vegas has responded nicely, scoring the last four points to cut the lead down to three. Bonner this time with the drive, and Wilson blocked her from behind. Jasmine Thomas left open. And the turnover gives it back to Las Vegas. Yeah, Vegas' pick and roll coverage has just not been solid consistently in the first game and a half of this series. Young, guarded by Bonner, who's a lot taller, gets it out. Asia with the rare miss. Rehan January with a great scoring night, 16 points. Most in a playoff game since 2015 for January. And I mentioned her first seven games of the regular season, she shot at about 33% from long range. But then her last six games, she jumped up to 39%. So as the season went on, she started to shoot better from long range. And again, having some success there tonight. Three for three. January put her hands out on Wilson, but I think they are calling a travel. Now Wilson with the turnover. Asia Wilson, most points in a first half this season with 16 before the break, 17, excuse me, before the break, now with 19. Jones working on swords, but decides not to attack her. And the ball goes off of Bonner. I believe there's a Teresa Plaisance sighting in the game right now. That's where Kurt is on his front line rotation. Played six minutes in the game one blowout, a 25 point win for Connecticut. Jackie Young gets some space thanks to Carolyn Swords and hits it. Good patience there by Jackie Young. And that's that mid range shot that we talked about earlier that she has much improved this season. Daniel Robinson forcing the turnover. So the ace is showing some fire. Only down one. Timeout on the floor. Here. We missed her last year in the playoffs, but Stewie's back. Coming off without Achilles injury, like she had never been hurt, never missed any time. And again, all three players with inconclusive tests that forced the postponement of game one on Sunday have been cleared and will play tonight for Seattle. The one thing that Connecticut has done with Asia Wilson, even though she has had her way whenever she's wanted it, is they've made her catch the ball a little further out on the lane. And Teresa Plaisance may have just picked up 
that foul on Jackie Young. Yeah, offensive foul on Jackie. Yeah, she drew it, and that is the third personal foul on Jackie Young. She has three, so does Angel and Danielle Robinson. Jones took it right to Swords that time. And Teresa Plaisance in the game gives Bree Jones a little more space to operate because Plaisance can knock down the long ball. Plaisance, the seventh year pro out of LSU. Bats the ball over to Jones. And here comes Jasmine Thomas on the break. Honor has been on fire in this third quarter. She has McBride on her, steps around, makes room. And Asia Wilson that time steps up to take away that look for Bonner. That's what Bill Lambeer wanted to see in those pick and roll situations, those long twos. All right here, Jones sets the screen. Asia Wilson gets out to contest. And Bonner, I believe, thought that she was fouled on that play. Lana Bonner with 19. Danielle Robinson was fouled on the other end of the floor by Brianna Jones. And this is important. Vegas already getting to the free throw line here. And that's been their bread and butter all season. They averaged 19 points per game on the line during the regular season. Shot the most free throws of any team. And now if you're Vegas, your mindset has to be try to get to the paint. Attack off of the bounce, get to the free throw line. Vegas hitting all six from the line in this quarter to take the one point lead. Thomas with the pull up. That's beautiful. That's her third and fourth points of the night, falling the career high on Sunday. Connecticut ping pongs back on top, and now Thomas picks Robinson's pocket. Tough stretch there by Danielle Robinson. Doesn't get to Jasmine Thomas's shot on the pick and roll and then the turnover. Jasmine Thomas does a nice job shooting the gap. She's always looking to deny. If you're wondering why Vegas's perimeter has been struggling in this series so far, it's because of the denial by Bree by Breon January and also by Jasmine Thomas. I mean, they make it tough on the wings. They're gonna make you have to do something else to catch the ball, to get into a rhythm. They will be in your shorts all night. The comparison with Jasmine Thomas, she was just on fire in game one, the career high. And Kurt Miller said that it was just one of those instances when somebody gets that hot, you just kind of sit back and watch her play. <laughs> Let her go. You don't call a lot of plays. Her teammates were great at Getting her the ball is the hot hand. She had a similar performance, I believe, in the playoffs against LA last year. Plaisance from the outside with the miss. Now Angel McCautry bringing the ball up. And then a nice look over to Hamby. Great recovery defensively. Connecticut again taking away a fast break opportunity. Another foul, the officials calling this one fairly closely tonight. Angel McCautry is the kind of player that likes to go rim to rim on the bounce, but Breon January and Bonner deny her that, and Bonner recovers to a streaking Dierica Hamby with the block. Excellent defensive transition. Bonner doing it on both ends of the floor tonight. Jackie Young able to get in and force the turnover. This is a really big lineup with three Jones and Bonner and Plaisance, a lot of length. And Bonner uses that length there. Yep, two on one, but she didn't need anybody. Got the steal and the layup. Bonner now with 21, as you see. 13 in the quarter, has hit three threes in this quarter. Angel trying to split the, def the defense. Keep attacking. Get to the free throw line right here if you're Vegas. But we mentioned how 
big the front line is right now for Connecticut, and that helps them on defense where Bonner shoots the gap, gets to the rack. Bonner wanted a jump ball called on that last play as she tells Roy Golbayan. Instead, DB picked up the personal foul, her third of the night. This has been a game of guess what lineup's going to be in. <laughs> it's <been> interesting. <laughs> Very. Angel comes through. That's, that's what Vegas does. Look at that, 20 free throw attempts. That's more like it for the Aces after a slow start. Crushing it in points in the paint. But the thing that Bill Lambeer shared with us about how Vegas' offense works without a three-point shot is they have to shoot a really high percentage from two. And that has not happened. Yes, they have gotten to the free throw line. And I'm not sure where they are in terms of rebounds, but it's been their inability to shoot two two point shots at a high percentage that's been different in this series. In this game, excuse me, Connecticut has one more rebound than the Aces tonight. Swords left open, a rare offensive opportunity for her, averaging just three points per game during the regular season. She's got four tonight. Hamby almost got the steal. So we go inside a minute in the third quarter. All tied up. Hamby now defending Bonner and got a piece of her. Erica Hamby, the sixth player of the year in this league for the second straight season, has six points tonight and only had four in game one. Yeah, she has struggled, no doubt. And she just doesn't look like herself in terms of her level of aggressiveness. It's almost as though Connecticut has her playing on her heels because of how physical they are. They were physical from the get-go in that game. Kurt Miller even admitting that they wanted to be physical in game one from the beginning so that the officials didn't adjust and start calling fouls. He said, we wanted to just go at them from the beginning, which they did. Jasmine Thomas heating up now in the third quarter. Gives Connecticut the two-point lead. Solid defense there by Bonner, staying down on McCautry. McCautry picked up her dribble and then threw it away. Thomas has January to her right, who drew the foul. McBride got her. McBride picks up the personal and it sends Breon January to the free throw line. We remind you today is National Voter Registration Day. As a reminder, registration deadlines are coming up soon. Don't wait. Go to rockthevote.org to get registered. Make your plan to vote today. Do not hesitate. No excuses. Go out and do it. Please vote. And you gotta register first. That's right, register sure. to vote. And if you think you're registered, you check and double, double check. check. And, and check in on a mail-in ballot as well. All right, shot clock's off here. Jackie Young with the ball in her hands. Asia sets the screen. What a great defense again by Connecticut, who take a four-point cushion into the fourth quarter. Uh, the shots will come to me if the men's coming. Connecticut makes everything so hard right now. What's the greatest challenge you have to overcome here in the fourth? Oh, they're hitting tough shots. We've got to keep playing defense and pull away. Thank you so Thank much. You. One of the keys for Vegas is definitely finding more rhythm on the offensive end because if they hit shots, they can get back and play better transition defense. Their transition defense has really hurt them tonight as Connecticut has gotten looks in early offense. And, and Hamby is much needed. I mean, she's got one rebound. That is really a telling stat. One rebound in one and three-quarter games because she didn't have any on Sunday. This is what you're talking about. Vegas in transition. That's Sugar Rogers who gets the start of the fourth quarter. See Vegas crushing it in the paint. And Vegas once again forced to set up half-court offense. 
Anyway, Hamby went in there, and nothing was called. The ball, though, stays with the Aces. Nine seconds on the shot clock. This is a Las Vegas team that averages about 89 points per game during the regular season. Scored 62 in game one, and they're sitting on 59 through three quarters for Bill Lambeer's team. And they couldn't even get the ball in. Frustration wow. really setting in, and that's something Vegas has to be aware of. Bill Lambeer mentioned that he felt like his team got frustrated the other night, and their response was not great. They quit. Another quarter left in this game. You have got to pick up your heads and continue to play. Yeah, best of five series. They lose tonight. They're going to have to win out. Daniel Robinson dealing with some foul trouble, getting the start at the point tonight. Hamby. Mon Premier gets the rebound. Hamby finished the regular season on such a high note, had a season high 23 points and four threes against Seattle, but has struggled in this series against Connecticut. Yeah, she struggled down the stretch a little bit in, in the regular season. She did have that big game against Seattle, but she had some games that were subpar. January, tough shot. And that's the kind of shot Yerka was just telling Holly about. You know, they're making tough shots. Yeah. Like, even when they are scoring over defense or creating a way out of no way, you got to say good shot and get to the other end with energy. Nice pass. There's some miscommunication there defensively by Connecticut. Yeah, that's one of the few lapses that we have seen from that Connecticut defense in this series. Cautry cuts the lead to four. And now Wilson with the foul as she comes out. Wilson coming out to show that time on the high hedge on the pick and roll. Right here, screened by Sugar Rogers, and when she goes back door, McCautry does. No one home on the back side. It looked like January was expecting someone to pick that up under the basket. Instead, one of the rare easy looks for Vegas. Carson buries it. Carson picked up mid-season after playing 10 games with Washington, stayed in the bubble, and Connecticut signed her. I'll tell you what else has been tough for Vegas defensively is the moving pieces for Connecticut. Like, you, scouting report, we're now on the second set with an Essence Carson playing at the four, something you may not have prepared for. Yeah, it's, it's been certainly a, a, a game of adjustments. Melissa Thomas just five minutes into the game leaving with a right shoulder injury. Delana Bonner, the rest of her teammates picking up the slack. As Mom Pamir comes out of the game. He's got five personals. Asia Wilson won't let her team no. die. She is the only ace player in double figures this evening. Pottery has nine, Asia has 22. Carson guarded by Hamby, January for three. Vegas switched that time on the screen with McCautry in January, perimeter player in, in Wilson, excuse me. Asia Wilson got out on January, but she missed a shot. Las Vegas team that won the last six games of the regular season to lock down the top seed in the league. But struggling against Connecticut. Tough pass that found McBride. Really nice look there by Hamby. The backdoor cut by McBride on the denial. Trams lead to two inside seven minutes to go. McCautry. Telegraph pass and Angel was able to step in the way. Let's see if Vegas can play through Asia Wilson, but everyone's staying active in movement on offense. Robinson with Jones on her. Defensive mismatch. Hamby, or excuse me, Asia. Of course it's Asia there to clean up. And that ties the game up at 67. 
more pressure on the ball by Hamby defensively. She's picking up Essence Carson and setting the tone on that end for Vegas. January, boy, she hit the deck hard. The basket made by Bonner. January just bounces right back up. She's a black belt, Pam. Yeah. That's what they do. Got a little bit of toughness in her. Rian January takes a tumble. Bonner picks it up. The WNBA Playoffs 2020 is presented by AT&T 5G. WNBA app. Pam, see, that's what I want my edges to look like. You see how slick Sue, Sue, Sue has good edges? What? That, pony, that, that, hair, that ponytail is in playoff form. <laughs> she has not a hair out of place. Yeah, we will slick. see Sue and Stewie who missed the last... Do we miss the last couple of regular season games, resting her foot? Unfortunately, we will not see Sylvia Fowle. She has been ruled out for Minnesota because of the sore right calf that has continued to give her problems most of this season. Yeah, just tough to hear, but you saw her laboring some in their playoff game against Phoenix, and she was just struggling, trying to play through it, trying to be there for her team, but understandable that she won't be available tonight. Country got fouled on her way to the rim. I mean, there is not a lot of room in that paint to move around. And Angel McCautry is one of the best at finding some daylight where there really isn't any in the paint, but she has not been a factor for her team on the offensive end. Not what we're used to seeing from McCautry. And she's had some frustration that I believe she's let bleed over into her game because of the physicality we've seen. And you see the shooting performance, particularly in game one. And Angel McCautry was uh, very frustrated when talking to the media yesterday, said it was like a football game. She said, I guess we're gonna have to play football back. She also said, I love failure. When failure happens, you come back so much better. She thought it was a perfect storm for her team to rebound in game two, but they're in a dogfight. Yeah, if anyone knows that, it's Angel McCautry. I used to always joke and say she could miss 15 shots and make her next 15. She never looks back. No. She, the confidence never wavers. And never hesitates to take that next shot. Ever. And it's been a pleasant surprise after hardly playing at all, just a few seconds last season with Atlanta. Jones left open, oh my. Rihanna Jones hitting the shot. To give Connecticut the two point lead. Boy, McBride, that's a tough shot in traffic. And McBride's gonna be called for the foul trying to get the rebound. Yeah, those are the kind of shots that Vegas really doesn't have to take. They've gotten some good backdoor cuts and movement and played through Asia Wilson. As possessions get tighter down the stretch of the game, Vegas has got to be intentional about where they're going to get their offense. A lot of switching defensively by Vegas. Now Wilson is on Bonner. Shot clock winding down. McBride tucked it out defensively on that possession. Was kind of concerned about having Bree Jones behind her, but got the tip and got the possession here. Lampier trying to keep his team from sliding into an 0-2 hold. No number one seed has ever been down two games to none in either a semi or a final since this new format started in 2016. Hamby, acrobatic shot with the scoop. Nice move by Hamby. We've seen an increase in energy from her down the stretch of this one. That was a big bucket. You don't want to be 0-2 for another reason, as that graphic just showed. Every team that's gone down 0-2 in these best of five series have lost the series. D-Rob, pushing into the third gear. The attack, and that's what Vegas has to do. They look tentative and, and hesitant. Get to the rim. That's what you've been good at all season long, is getting the ball going, finding a piece of the paint. Bree Jones did a nice job of getting there. I believe her feet were still in the restricted area as the secondary defender. A good possession there by Danielle. 
feel weird calling her Danielle. <laughs> She's been known as D Rob since her days at the University of Oklahoma, getting the start tonight in favor of Lindsey Allen, the first shakeup for Bill Lambier and his lineup that has been consistent all season as you see Mon Premier come in to give uh, Charles a break. Vegas with the lead for the first time since about four minutes to go in the third quarter. Free throw discrepancy. Big time in favor of Vegas. Where was the defense? Not sure why Asia Wilson was sucked up to Mom for beer. There's Alyssa Thomas. McBride with the big shot. Alyssa Thomas leaving the game about five minutes in. Non-contact injury hurt her right shoulder. She left the building to get evaluated and now is back. Will not play anymore tonight. But certainly that's got to give her team a lift just to have her back on the bench. Oh man, yeah, just to see her. One nothing lead with the lead right now or taking on Las Vegas and trailing by two, pardon me. And game one of the next series coming up, Minnesota and Seattle. And a reminder, all time in best of five series, no team has ever come back from an 0-2 deficit to win 0-13. And, and that is what Las Vegas is trying to avoid tonight. Down the stretch of this game, what's important for Las Vegas is to take good shots. They have to be very intentional about getting Asia Wilson touches, but also everyone else staying involved, cutting, and looking for shot opportunities. And that was a rather quick shot there by Angel McCautry. Boy, it sure was. That's the starting five out there on the floor for Las Vegas. Mom Premier out on the court for the Sun, who are playing without Alyssa Thomas. And for Connecticut, they've got to take care of the ball. Las Vegas has 18 points off of Connecticut's 16 turnovers in this one, and there is another one. It's been costly in the second half for Sun. So Alyssa Thomas out with the right shoulder injury since the five-minute mark of the first quarter. And that's all she does is in the playoffs. And that doesn't even tell the whole story. Yeah. Her intensity, her tenacity, her defense, they're missing it all. And, and switch here, Asia Wilson has Jasmine Thomas guarding her. Let's see if we can get some ball reversal for Vegas. McCautry can't finish. Bonner just taps it to herself. Thomas guarded by Robinson. Here's Mom Premier. The shot clock down to five for Bonner. Elevates it like Asia. Boy. Might have gotten a hand on it, but Brianna Jones is there. Jones in the right spot at the right time. AT's trying to walk off some of that intensity on the side. This has got to be killing Melissa Thomas just to be over there. Tie ball game as we approach a minute to go. Bill Lambeer is not a happy camper. He calls a timeout. 24 points, 17 of them coming in the first half. Back screen here for McCautry. Here's Asia taking it right to Brianna Jones. Yes, and the foul. There is no other option when you have the MVP. Asia Wilson looks off McCautry, blows by Brianna Jones, takes some contact as Bump Premier comes over. The finish on the right side with her right hand, non-dominant. What a play for, by Wilson. Mom Premier has just picked up her sixth personal foul. She has fouled out the rookie from Miami, but boy, she has given them some quality minutes so far in this series. Just a couple of points, but making uh, her presence known on defense with three blocks tonight. And she's out of the game. Asia completes a three-point play. And a three-point cushion for Las Vegas. Hamby has started to pick up the ball late in this game, and it's made a difference in Vegas' defensive intensity. She started it with Essence Carson, and there with Bonner. Well, Connecticut down three. And then they throw it into traffic, and McBride comes away with it. The 17th turnover of the game for Connecticut. That has really been the Achilles heel for them in the second half. Yeah. 
Asia lost it on the way to the bucket and then finished. Asia Wilson owns this matchup with Brianna Jones. Loses the ball, this time goes left. And you see the emotion. Little swipe down there by Bree Jones. Not much contact on the foul. Wilson misses it. McCautry kept it alive and Hamby put it home. So the Las Vegas Aces trailing for much of this game. Coming up big in the final minutes. Really making the plays down the stretch when they needed it. We said the keys for Vegas were to be intentional about their offensive possessions. Well, they had a couple quick shots, but then they settled in and got the ball to Asia Wilson. Two straight possessions allowed her some space for isolation. And she made Connecticut pay right here. Bree Jones <laughs> almost loses it. Ends up getting the basketball back, like you said, Pam. Little contact there by Jones, the call by the officials, and Asia is pumped. Well, that is just remarkable that she was able to hang on to the basketball. But look at this line. Seven. Seven oh. blocks, seven rebounds. What a night. And just for the heck of it, 29 points. Asia Wilson showing why she was the most valuable player in the league this season, especially early in this game when she was, you know, the rest of her team was slow out of the gate again for the second straight game. She's the one who kept it in it, and now it looks like she's the one who's going to maybe close it out. And it's been a total of 22 points off of turnovers for Vegas in this game. Much of them in the second half. Bonner can't get it to go. Rebound bounces around McCautry. Able to come up with it. And the Las Vegas Aces about to tie this series up at one game apiece in what was a very crucial fourth quarter. There were 14 lead changes and 20 ties in this game before Asia Wilson really started to salt things away. The rest of her teammates forcing turnovers. Yeah, Last they foul really, on January, excuse me. They really picked it up when they needed it. Hamby, defensive intensity. Asia Wilson has been there all night, but Vegas was able to force some turnovers at the right time. To what it looks like, pull this one out. Time out taken. Connecticut not ready to throw in the towel quite yet. Asia Wilson with 29 points. That is a playoff record for this Las Vegas franchise. Their third season out west since moving from San Antonio. And Laid out behind the bench. Boy, Asia Wilson, just a spectacular. And remember, she's only 24. I mean, she's still, she's going to get better. Connecticut Sun, valiant effort. Especially with no Alyssa Thomas for the variety for the uh, for most of this game, the vast majority of it, and the major concern Connecticut moving forward, and we hope Alyssa Thomas has uh, got that right shoulder injury, but Asia Wilson helping Bill's team get the W.